Hello, this is Abdow Avenue, I'm Jason Abdow, and today we're going to be talking about the latest album from King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, The Murder of the Universe. Now, King Gizzard is a band that I recently got into last year with their album Nonagon Infinity, which made it onto my year-end list, I thought that was a great album, and I was just so impressed with how this band was able to kind of combine a lot of different rock elements, I mean, there's elements of garage rock, punk rock, progressive rock, uh, psychedelic rock, even metal, uh, when you really look into it, and they're just kind of able to combine, like, all these crazy styles and make this really unique sound, and the vocals all over their albums are so wild, it's just really the definition of a crazy ride, usually, with them. And that was definitely the case on Nonagon Infinity. And I thought it was also kind of the case on their album earlier this year, Flying Microtonal Banana. And for those who don't know, this band is currently planning on releasing four to five individual albums in the course of 2017, which is a crazy feat. And this is the second album that they have released this year. And I was kind of excited for it. I thought Microtonal Flying Banana was pretty good, uh, but nothing that I feel was out of the band's comfort zone besides for the whole, like, microtoning of the instruments, which sounded cool, but also that's really not something I feel that your average listener is really picking up on. Uh, and I heard that this would be kind of a three-chapter concept album, all within 46 minutes, which I was really curious to see how this would be executed, and I think they did a mostly good job, at least of the concept album part. I think what benefits this album the most is how descriptive I feel that the band is able to get with their lyrics. I mean, you really start to feel, and you can really start to imagine the imagery that they're painting with all these post-apocalyptic and really apocalyptic images of battles going on between huge monsters and uh, this kind of digitized world that they portray at the end, and this transformation into a beast on the first chapter, um, which I think is probably the most similar to what they were doing on uh, Nonagon Infinity, the first chapter, The Tale of the Altered Beast. It's kind of this unique story about corruption and temptation, I guess, uh, where we see this guy kind of get tempted by this beast and slowly becomes the beast. And... Uh, it's kind of, it's a, it's a fun story, it definitely is using the repetitive lyrics, um, right from the beginning, and, you know, it's just, it goes on and on, and kind of like with Nonagon Infinity, the, all these tracks kind of blend together seamlessly, one after the other, it feels like one long, like, 15-20 minute track, and for the most part, I think this works well. Um, in the second chapter, I think it might also be one of the better of the three, uh, might, might be my favorite. Uh, it's called The Lord of Lightning vs. Balrog, and it's kind of this battle between the, the titular character, the Lord of Lightning, and he creates this other monster, I guess, called the Balrog, and they battle it out, and, you know, it's like, it's this totally, like, out there concept, and... I don't know, I think it's so well done. I think the two songs, The Lord of Lightning and The Balrog, uh, their songs are both some of the best songs on this album. The only problem I have with these two, uh, with these two chapters, especially the first one, is that the band uses this, uh, like, spoken word interludes that kind of interrupt the, uh, interrupt the chapters with usually some exposition, usually just, like, words, honestly. Um, it's, it's a female speaker, and while she kind of has this creepy vibe to her, she's kind of does set a mood, and it, it worked like when this album starts off with her speaking, but besides that, uh, I really felt that this was kind of distracting and took away from the music, especially the first chapter, because it was, like I said, it kind of all, the tracks were flowing so seamlessly together, just they kind of took me out of it, and they wouldn't be, like, well-placed either. It would be, you know, you'd feel like, you'd feel like momentum was building, and then just, it would stop for a minute so she could say something. It usually didn't really, uh, affect, uh, the, the story going on, and then just, 
resume to the the wild instrumentation. And like I said, this pr the production all over this album is crazy. I mean, you know, you get all the wild guitars and the hollering vocals and, you know, at one point there's harmonicas brought in. I mean, there's just so much. Um, but yeah, it kind of reminded me of when you're listening to a, a song or something on your phone while you're driving with the GPS on and you're like really getting into the song and then the GPS will come on and be like, left turn in half a mile and it just kind of <laughs> just interrupts the music to tell you something that, I mean, you probably need to hear because you need to know where you're going, but uh, it just kind of totally messes with the flow of the song and I just felt like that was something that could have been handled much better, and I feel like that was a little rushed. Um, and then we get to the final third of this album, which is titled... I'm probably going to butcher this name, even though it's <laughs> he says it on the album, the Hantumi, Hantumi and the Murder of the Universe. And this is a unique, if somewhat alienating part of this album, where we get the cyborg, and he's kind of talking about how he yearns for two human things, death and to vomit, and it kind of just, the songs on here are pretty good for the most part, until the end, I don't know, it gets a little graphic with uh, him, he learns how to vomit and dies a death of infinite vomiting, and floods the universe with his vomit, and that's the murder of the universe, and... Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of ridiculous, and it probably might be a little too silly for a lot of people. Uh, and I really don't know how I personally feel about it. It's it was definitely it was definitely a lot, and I don't know. I feel like when I first listened to this, I thought it was a fun time, and since then, I I just every time I listen to it, the problems kind of aren't going away for me. I feel like this is something that could have been really great, and instead, it's just pretty good. Uh, like, I would give this a light B, and definitely a recommendation for King Gizzard fans, uh, but probably not just for, like, your average rock listen listener. Uh, I would probably start with something like Not A Gone Infinity. I think that's definitely a more cohesive and interesting project than this. Uh, but hopefully the other albums that the band has planned for the rest of the year turn out a little better than this. Uh, I was, I'm a little let down by it, but again... Hopefully, hopefully those albums show that they they are going to put out quality material because the last thing I want is for this band to become more of that quantity over quality kind of kind of band. Uh, so, do you have you listened to Murder of the Universe? Did you like it? Hate it? Do you agree? Disagree with me? Let me know in the comments below. And thank you for watching.